Hi there, and welcome to another video of Talk Talks. Today, we're going around the world again. I'm interviewing an illustrator from the UK. He draws a lot about a fantasy world, far away from us, or is it not? Let's discover. Before we start the interview, let me show you some work that Nick has made. Thank you so much for having me and for giving me the opportunity to talk about my work. So Nick, my first question to you is, how has illustration influenced your life? Illustration has influenced my life in that it has come to form an important part of how I express myself and explore my thoughts and feelings through stories and characters. It is also how I share ideas with others in a way that feels free and limitless. To me, creating things brings colour and life to a grey world and gives me a real sense of purpose. Most of your known work is from your illustrations of a different world with creatures with different colours and different names. How did you come up with all this? The origins of the world you see in my work stretches back as far as 2013, though I didn't begin developing it properly until a couple of years later. It started at a time where I just did not know what to do with myself at all and I felt lost. To suppress my love of fantasy was to extinguish my very being. It took me a few years to realise that. So this world started as an idea for an animation originally. I took the basis of a character exploring other lands and went from there. I drew up an island and said, OK, who will she meet here and what will she learn from them? I then populated it with as many different fantastical people as I could design for my character to meet with the intention of showing that all people, no matter who they are, should be valued. Even if June might be uncertain or scared, everyone she meets leaves an important mark upon her. And with that, I wanted to explore the theme of identity and the search for happiness in a world that's constantly changing and shifting, which is something important to me. I wanted to put my characters in situations that challenge them and hopefully the reader into considering where they belong also. And although things have developed a bit since this original, initial, naive idea, this still forms a core value of what I make up until today. Even if the places and characters change, it gives me reason to keep on drawing and fleshing out this world. So, at least in my case, a world doesn't come overnight and they never stop developing and changing as you work on them. The names of the characters and the places in your stories and illustrations, they sound very exotic to me. How did you come up with those? I have a couple of ways of thinking up names. The first is just words that sound good or funny to me. I might hear something out of context on the street, or just think up random words and make notes. I have lists of words I might pluck from for a name. But if I'm designing somewhere with a specific flavour, often too I'll find words in other languages that fit and mean something in relation to the character or place and I'll then mix them up and mash them together until it becomes something I like, but a unique word. You have also released some books. How has the response been? The response so far has been good. I'm incredibly grateful to those who have taken the time to share their thoughts and feelings about what I've written. I always find it heartening when people identify with what I write and take something away from it. But if people enjoy them just for the imagination or the drawings, then I'm happy to hear that also. But always, if you have an opinion about what I write, positive or negative, then please do let me know. I can imagine that the illustrations and the stories that you create take a lot of time. Do you still have time for other illustration projects and how do you combine the hours? I work a full-time job, not in any kind of art capacity whatsoever. And so while I consider art jobs if I'm asked, it's not something I really think about all that much. My passion is in my original work, more than the act of art itself. And unless I'm feeling particularly inspired, I manage only one illustration a week, usually designing, researching, referencing in the evenings after work, and hopefully by the weekend, have a design that I can begin painting. That forms the basis of my creative routine. Then the painting itself takes me about a day and a half, maybe less or more, depending on how complex it is. I tend, and because I tend to do full scenes with backgrounds and lots of details, finding a way of balancing that with speed is important to me. 
I normally have a story in mind as I'm designing and I'll make notes and start tagging it up, usually a bit later, which I'll then pass on for feedback. Maintaining this routine has definitely gotten harder as time has gone on, but I'm determined to keep it up and keep creating as consistently as I can. I believe that you have a great sense of imagination and creativity and I can understand that people who do not have this don't always understand how it goes. Do you ever run into situations where people do not understand it and you have to explain yourself? And how do you deal with those situations? When you have a personal vision or a world that is constantly in development, it can be a hard thing to explain to people what it is you're trying to achieve. I always dread the moment when, if I'm in a social situation, someone will mention that I'm an artist to someone and they're like, oh, so you're an artist, what is it you do? And then I have to try to explain it or justify myself almost. Fantasy isn't for everyone either. And for this reason, I rarely engage with people about my art in real life, just to avoid having to explain it. I shouldn't, but that's what it is. I get beset by a very strong sense of imposter syndrome and I feel like if I talk about things face to face or try to explain what it is I make and see their reaction, then people will see through me and it will all fall apart. I'm not someone who is good at explaining things verbally. Because of this, my approach to illustration is to operate on two levels. The first is to just have an attractive illustration at a surface level that works entirely on its own without context that people can just enjoy by its own merits. But those who have read the stories or know the characters will find something more deeper in it that they can follow. It's not always achievable, but that's the instinct I always try to follow. In saying that, one of the great things about social media is that it's allowing me to connect with people who understand that and it has brought many meaningful friendships with many fellow artists and storytellers. And last, do you still have any dreams about illustration and stories or writing for the future? I've been meaning for a long time now to print my books independently and sell them myself instead of through the company we shall not name. That was something born more out of necessity at the time in order to keep me going. I'm not too great at the admin side of things. I've had requests for prints many times now, and it is always in the back of my mind that I need to finally make that happen. It's just working and trying to create is hard. Although my personal situation makes it difficult, I would eventually like to drop some hours and focus more on creating and all the other things I need to do. But, you know, I will get there eventually, hopefully. Well, this has certainly been very fun and helpful. I want to thank you once more and I hope that the viewers also loved it. See you in the next video.